I love this concept of financial freedom because a lot of times financial freedom, people think that they already have to have all the money. And for me, it doesn't mean that. It just means that they have that intentional plan for their money. You are now listening to the Going North Podcast, where you'll receive tips and techniques to advance yourself. I'm your host, Dom Brightman, and every week we're going to be hearing from an author who's going to share their expertise to help you charge forward in life. On a quick side note, be sure to check out Going North, the book. It's available in ebook audio as well as paperback form for those who love to read a traditional book. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North Podcast, we're back at you again with yet another author, but not just any author. Holiday season's coming up, and you're going to need some money advice. And we got one heck of an expert on today's podcast episode. This wonderful lady right here is six foot tall and full of not only fun, but also knowledge and abundance. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's an author, and she also was in a bodybuilding competition. And she is also a businesswoman powerhouse because she started young at the age of 21 in the banking industry. And she has been growing ever since like a giant tree, giving positive shade to the rest of the folks in the hot weather. And you're probably wondering who I have on today's show, who's the author of the book called Fit Money. It's the one the only J.C. herself, Julia Carlson. How are you today, ma'am? Ah, I'm great. Happy to be here. Woo, happy to have you here, too. So just starting off with the easy stuff. So mind telling us a bit about yourself and how you made a meteoric rise to a business owner? Uh, Sure. So I think it's part of my DNA, how I was just wired to become an entrepreneur, (laughs) from the early stages of, you know, my lemonade sand, uh, babysitting club, mowing the neighbor's lawn. <laughs> my brothers and I were always out there trying to, trying to make a buck. <laughs> so when I uh, started out uh, in life, in my adult life, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I also, you know, it's hard starting out to do that. So I went to work at a local bank and quickly went into the investment department where I just enjoyed so much what I was learning about personal finance and investments. And I had grown up around a actually positive money experience. Like my parents didn't have fights about money, which now, 20 years later, I realized how uh, important that is to creating a strong financial future because so, so many of us have kind of these money taboos from our childhood. And so I got licensed. I got all my securities licensed, got some experience. And by the age of 23, I had kind of hit the glass ceiling and was going to go as far as I was going to go in that bank and started at that point to marry my passion of finance with entrepreneurship and started my own business. Ah, fabulous indeed. Samoan lawns and lemonade stands. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and today that's, that's grown into uh, my, my business, Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group, where we have offices all over Oregon and Southwest Washington, but we serve clients all over the country. And I wrote a book last year. Um, I, I've had probably thousands of these conversations and just really wanted to put my thoughts and ideas out there to the world for the people that I won't see one-on-one in my office. Uh, Great idea. I'm glad you did that. And it actually puts you in the business of immortality. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) I had never thought of it that way. 
That's right. A book can go where you can't go, and it can outlast you once you decide to depart for the other world. Mm-hmm. So how does it feel to be an author and publish that book and actually get it out there? Any tips for those out there who may need to, they got their book published and they just need to keep that book out there? Yeah, I think that just like starting a business, it was all about consistency and determination and persistence of like, you know, just keeping t- keep on telling your story. I think just to tell you a little bit about the book, I and then I can go into more ideas about that. I when I, I had had my third child, actually I call it my fourth child because m- my business was my first child. <laughs> And so I, you know, what, what I was about five years into my business where I thought things were going well, I had put in a lot of um, energy, and then we decided to start having children. And after my uh, last child was born, my health had kind of taken a back seat. I thought, oh, I need to do something to lose the baby weight and kind of feel good and get my energy back. And that is when I decided to hire a coach and compete in figure bodybuilding. So I did that for about five years. I actually competed in five different shows. I was doing pretty well. And what I discovered over those five years were the exact same skills and things that I had to do to get my body in the best shape of my life are the same things that one needs to get their financial life in shape. And so when I was done competing, I took the next year then to really write this book and put it out there, but it's essentially the seven steps anyone can use to get their financial life in shape. Ah, beautiful indeed. And I believe the first chapter was based off of your experience with your coach back in your bodybuilding days, right? That's right. I was I was part of a team called 3D, and we call him Coach D. The reason why he called his team 3D was for desire, determination, and discipline. So before we make any change in life, no matter what it is, it starts with that desire and understanding not what, not just a goal that you put out there, but what is that burning desire within that is, in my world at the time, going to help me make sure that I ate broccoli instead of brownies. <laughs> 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 You have to kind of like dig deep and find that internal desire of what is my purpose or why, what is the why behind this that's going to keep me going. Uh, and that's exactly for all the other authors out there, right? It's like we have our passion and our desire, and that is what's going to keep us putting the message out there when we're feeling like it's not doing any good or it's not getting uh, traction or, you know, all those things that can, our thoughts that we all have, I think, when we're launching a new book. Uh, true indeed, true indeed. What if they have a product out there called like the broccoli brownie where it's like a brownie disguised as broccoli? <laughs> well, I have seen a recipe where you can use black beans to make brownies, but they just don't taste the same. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> You'll really probably need a, feel like you need a colonic after that one, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Coming down the pike here, it kind of comes all together. I, was, I see a title, Fit Money, and then have the bodybuilding experience and combining both of those together. So what led to actually just finishing up the book with all the other mindsets, like the healthy money mindset. So what helped you to develop that? Yeah, so no, yeah, step two is the healthy money mindset. And again, what I talked about in the beginning would be so many of us have these unconscious beliefs around money that keep us from making progress. And, and what I mean by that is maybe you were told as a child, you can't af- I, we can't afford this. No, don't ask me again. Like every, you know, there was always like this scarcity mindset around money or even the word budget. Like sometimes when I say the word budget, people think of all these negative restricted feelings and thoughts or it could be even 
I'm never going to get out of debt, or I'm never going to be able to retire, or I don't understand all this investment uh, lingo, or it's too hard. So a lot of times people want to stick their head in the sand and, and they just ignore it because they don't know, you know how to get out of the, the thoughts that are keeping them captured. So step two is all about peeling back the layers. There's some exercise that I take people through in my workbook that's just exposing what are those thoughts and where are those thoughts coming from and then also how do I let go of those and create a compelling future and a plan that's going to you know, take me where I want to go as opposed to leave me you know, staying in, those, in that fear really. Yeah, and that, that budget thing can really suck from time to time if you're not careful of like the random bills that you forget to pay. <laughs> yeah, and, but, and that happens a lot of time when we're not bringing intention with, to our money, right? So I teach my clients, are you living in reactive mode with your money, right? Like you're, you're not planning, you're not saving because you're always reacting to what happened yesterday or what you should be doing. Even in, with these new tax laws, a lot of people ha- don't understand them and what's going to happen at tax time. They're going to be saying in 2019, I wish I would have known that in 2018 because they would have probably made different decisions this year. So what I try to coach is intention, right? Like how do we get intentional with your money? Money's a tool. We, sh- we do not we give it too much power, right? It ruins relationships. We, we need to like void it of emotion and just use it as a tool for what it should be used. Amen to that indeed, especially the intentionality piece. And I guess it kind of goes in, in line with basically having goals in mind, financial goals, especially as monthly savings goal, I guess. Mm-hmm. So what advice for those who want to set a monthly savings goal but they don't have the discipline to actually stick with it? <laughs> yeah, so I would say um, a foolproof it, right? So one way you could do that is setting it up where it either happens if you are employed, then you can set it up automatically through like a retirement plan through your work if that's an option. If you are self-employed, then you'll have to set this up yourself, but you can set up an account. Typically, I recommend do not have a savings account at where you locally bank because it's too easy to access. So you want to set it up at somewhere else, and then you can automatically have, and I always start with a small amount that you are comfortable with. A lot of entrepreneurs don't have a steady income, so you can kind of look at, okay, what's your base? income amount and what's a savings goal based on that that's really consistent that you can do and set it up automatically. Like just make it happen month in, month out. And then for me, what I do is at least once a year, I usually do it at least two or three times for me just because I know that this is what's helped my family get financially ahead. But when you have these times where you sit down and become real intentional and set your goals, then you have to think about, okay, should I be increasing that monthly amount? And I think the easiest thing to do is set it up to where it's automatically happening each month. Very true. Classic sage advice right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So there you have it, folks. Make sure you set up your savings account somewhere in Antarctica, right? That's right. <laughs> Hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> That way you'll save up enough money to get your fur coat to get over there and get all of it, right? (laughs) (laughs) Or a fake fur coat if you love the animals. (laughs) And you'd save money. (laughs) That too. Lots of it. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! So what's probably one of your biggest tips for those in this upcoming holiday season with their money with folks trying to save money and some folks may be just going all out mad for their kids or maybe their family just buying gifts and whatnot. Any advice for those out there who may be there so they don't go completely broke in the hot red after the holidays are all over? Yeah, so 
Definitely. Number one, make sure that you set up a budget for your gifts. And what I would recommend is that you actually use cash. And so that will keep you honest. Uh, if you, so if you're going to the stores, imagine that. That's a concept as opposed to online shopping. But if you're going to the stores, <laughs> leave your credit cards at home, take cash of what you want to spend, and understand that the gifts of experience, like spending time together, making cookies with your kids, listening to holiday music, that is the joy of the season, as opposed to kids will not remember all of the plastic wrapped up under the tree. My kids are now 15, 11, and 9, and I did this early on. I spoiled them with all sorts of different plastic toys that we now have purged from the household. So what they remember and talk about now is, remember that Christmas, Mom, we went, we, you know, went to Grandma's. or It was all about the experience, not necessarily the, the gifts that were under the tree. Beautiful. So create memories and save money at the same time. Yeah, we call it memory investing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Is yeah. that like an upcoming blog article maybe, memory investing? I think that could be. <laughs> Woo, beautiful indeed, beautiful indeed. So going forward, is there going to be any more upcoming books in addition to Fit Money? You're just going to keep pushing that one out as like an entry point to folks who want to get in touch with your business? Yeah, I mean that was that – was, well, the idea is – Again, the people I'll never touch to have my thoughts out there. But yes, people do read the book and then want to want to work with us. Uh, we're trying to develop a kind of a digital platform where people can do that all over. Uh, so we have the beginnings of that set up, which is exciting. And then also one of my favorite clients to work with is the entrepreneur. And so I'm actually thinking about there may be a fit money boss in the future or you know, something about helping small business owners. Because so many times when we're a small business owner, we're struggling with the day-to-day and we often forget about, oh, saving for our financial future or building wealth outside your company as opposed to at the end of the day when you're looking at an exit plan, most entrepreneurs have all the wealth built into their business. And so... For me, I I love teaching entrepreneurs how do we build wealth outside of your business, using your business, and get tax advantages. So that's kind of something I've been toying around with and and thinking about in my head for for the next book. (laughs) Sweet. Yes. Sounds like a big plan indeed. (laughs) Maybe even have coffee mugs. Maybe, yes. Be financially free. <laughs> so we can. The I, I love this concept of financial freedom because a lot of times financial freedom, people think that they already have to have all the money, and for me, it doesn't mean that. It just means that they have that intentional plan for their money and having the plan and kind of living life on purpose, including your finances. For me, that is that freedom. They know that they're doing everything they they need to be doing to move towards that financial independence goal. That's right. One of the greatest feelings in the world, indeed. And a question like to ask a lot of the guests on the show is that with writing your own books, I'm pretty sure there have been others that have inspired you to write your own. Some mine, naming a title or two that may have inspired you. Ah, yeah. So I think that... I think when I was probably 20 is when I I picked up my first uh, Tony Robbins tape. So he has always been someone that I've looked up to and and learned from. So for sure I've been touched by his thoughts. Also Dave Ramsey. I was introduced to his book in 2007. And so that really changed the way that I help uh, clients and help families. I, I believe in his, his philosophy and that you'll see that sprinkled throughout my book. And, but I feel like my book and my journey is almost like a feminine version of what he's teaching because what I have found that 
with his his book, he's very like uh, black and white. Where not all of us think in black and white. <laughs> so. Ah uh, yes, the wonderful gray area, the forbidden <laughs> zone. <laughs> where lots of freedom can come. <laughs> That's right, and then the gray area eventually turns into turquoise, right? Mm-hmm. And purples. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> I knew you loved royalty. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. So, with all of your knowledge and experience, if you were to keep it and you woke up tomorrow and you were 25 again in the current year of 2018, what would be the piece of advice that you would give to yourself? Oh, man, start, start saving today. One of, the, one of the biggest things that we can do is teach, I think, our younger generation the rule of 72, which is I'm, Albert Einstein actually discovered this and called it the eighth wonder of the world, which is the concept of compound interest. So if you take the number 72 and divide in, into it the interest rate you're getting on your money, it will tell you how many years it takes your money to double. If I was 25, how much if, you, if I saved then and was consistent, saved every month, um, that that will lead to financial independence at a very young age, right? Because you can't get back time. So starting, start saving young um, and be consistent. Uh, yes, the consistency part is also very important. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of goes back to the brownie or broccoli thing. It's like the brownie comes out of nowhere and snatches you with its alluring fudge smell. <laughs> well, here's the second thought to that then. Your past does not equal your futures, which is a lovely, it's one of my favorite Tony Robbins quotes. But that's exactly it. It's like, even though, yes, we're going to eat the brownies and we're going to spend more money than we wanted to spend and we're all going to get, you know, uh, trapped in Target or Amazon spending things that we're not, you know, reacting, right? We always get a, a fresh start every hour, every day. Every month, we can always start again. Woo! And for those who want to start their wonderful journey on the Julia Carlson train, how do we keep in touch with you? Sure. Well, I think if they just uh, Google Julia Carlson Fit Money, they'll probably find me. But my website is juliamcarlson.com. And there they can get a copy of my book. I'm also, my book's also on Amazon, but also all the, all the workbook and accompanying videos and documents can be found on my website uh, as well. So lots of good resources there. And then I'm, I'm also on Facebook and do live videos about personal finance there. That's, that's, um, we'd love to have them there too. Woohoo! So there you have it, folks. If you want a six-pack and some finance, this is the way to follow <laughs> right over here. Go ahead and check out that book, that e-book, and check out a Facebook page for the live videos. And she's generous with the content because the videos range from 5 to 45 minutes. So go on ahead and pick up that knowledge. So any parting words for those still listening, Julia? Yes, yeah, so I would say uh, go get started, right? So whether it's reading my book or just creating a plan with your money and getting intentional, just start. Hey there, buddy. Looks like you made it to the end of this episode. Since you made it to the end of this episode, do both of us a favor and stop being greedy. Stop it right now. And share this episode with your friends and your fellow podcast lovers, especially those who have book clubs and want to listen to the authors who write some amazing books. Be sure to check out the rest of the backlog, too, while you're at it, and share all those, too.